Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer for Trinity Episcopal Church. This is Wednesday, July 26, 2023. I'm uh, so glad that we can join together this evening on this uh, very hot July July um, day. Um, I know that when I got out of the car this afternoon, um, coming home, it said there was 105 degrees. So I hope that you're uh, cool wherever you are right now inside uh, with some air conditioning or fans or something and enjoying some kind of a cool beverage or something and being able to um, being able to sit down and enjoy worshiping together. Um, evidently, my dog Scout is bothered somehow in the in the other room probably bothered because hank the other dog is walking around and and getting some kind of prevalence that she isn't because that's what scout does all right so uh tonight uh we're gonna worship evening prayer right too um tonight we also celebrate the uh feast of the parents of the blessed virgin mary um the tradition of the parents of the blessed virgin mary um you know we, we we don't have specific specific information in the bible about mary's parents but uh the tradition of mary's parents uh started to develop by the uh, second century uh ce or ad and you started to see a lot of uh, things come out about the mary's parents and uh you see their names being joachim and anna um and that uh there's a lot of you know there are a lot of um writings that came out about mary's parents being you know specifically very holy devout people um and um anna particularly the mother of mary um comes from the name of hannah you see in the old testament and the writings of uh, the writings of hannah and so that they come from the line of david and of course that's really important you see coming from the line of david so Joaquin and, and Anna. And um, so uh, oh, as time, as the centuries progressed, uh, the church wanted to mark um, the sanctification or the make, making holy the, uh, the devotion of Joaquin and Anna, their, their saintliness to be chosen to be the parents of Mary, who would, of course, be chosen to be the Blessed Virgin the mother of Christ, and so we we honor their um, their their them both uh, on this day, um, the the parents of the Blessed Virgin. So that's that's one of the things that we do on this day. So uh, let's uh, let me share my screen, and we'll go to the Venite app and um, and uh, pray uh, evening prayer. Uh, oh, I have it. I have to get to the top of my page here. And um, you will see evening prayer for Wednesday after 8, Sunday of Pentecost, the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Well, let's pray together. Worship the Lord and beauty of his holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourself. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's say to the Apostle Aaron, and the O gracious light together. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, 
to be glorified through all the worlds. We have two psalms tonight. We start with Psalm 49. Let's say it together. Hear this, all you peoples. Hearken, all you who dwell in the world. You have high degree and low, rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall meditate on understanding. I will incline my ear to a proverb and set forth my riddle upon the harp. Why should I be afraid in evil days, when the wickedness of those at my heels surrounds me, the wickedness of those who put their trust in their goods and boast of their great riches? We can never ransom ourselves or deliver to God the price of our life, for the ransom of our life is so great that we should never have enough to pay it in order to live forever and ever and never see the grave. For we see the wise die also, like the dull and stupid they perish, and leave their wealth to those who come after them. Their graves shall be their homes forever, their dwelling places from generation to generation. Though they call the lands after their own names, even though honored, they cannot live forever. They are like the beasts that perish. Such is the way of those who foolishly trust in themselves, and the end of those who delight in their own words. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight away to the grave. Their form shall waste away, and the land of the dead shall be their home. But God will ransom my life. He will snatch me from the grasp of death. Do not be envious when some become rich or when the grandeur of the house increases, for they will carry nothing away at their death, nor will their grandeur follow them. Though they thought highly of themselves while they lived and were praised for their success, they will join the company of their forebears who will never see the light again. Those who are honored but have no understanding are like the beasts that perish. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does not and does any good. God looks down from heaven upon us all. And see if there is any who is wise, if there is any is there is one who seeks after God, every one has proved faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, not no, not one. Have they no knowledge, these evildoers who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon God? See how greatly they tremble, such trembling as never was. For God has scattered the bones of the enemy. They are put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel be glad. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson is from the book of Joshua. Then Joshua built on Mount Ebal an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, just as Moses, Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, as it is written in the book of the Law of Moses, an altar of unhewn stones on which no iron tool has been used. They offered on it burnt offerings to the Lord and sacrificed offerings of well-being. And there, in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua wrote on the stones a copy of the Law of Moses, which he had written. All Israel, alien as well as citizen, with their elders and officers and their judges, stood on opposite sides of the ark in front of the Levitical priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, half of them in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded at first that they should bless the people of Israel. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, blessings and curses, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded that Joshua did not read before all the assembly of Israel. And the women and the little ones and the aliens who resided among them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As a response to this reading, let's read together the song of Hannah. My heart exalts in you, O God. My triumph song is lifted in you. My mouth derides my enemies, for I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like you, nor any rock to be compared to you, our God. 
Do not heap up prideful words or speak in arrogance. Only God is knowing and weighs all actions. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the weak are clothed in strength. Those once full now labor for bread. Those who hungered now are well fed. The childless woman has borne sevenfold, while the mother of many is forlorn. God destroys and brings to life, casts down and rises up, gives wealth and takes away, humbles and dignifies. God raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the rulers and inherit a place of honor, for the pillars of the earth are God's, on which the whole earth is founded. Our second lesson is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, then on to Iconium and Antioch. Then they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, It is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From there they sailed back to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done with them and how he'd opened a door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle response to this reading is the song of Simeon, the Nuke Dementis. Let's say it together. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the, to your, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness and let your people sing with joy. Give us peace, O Lord, in all the world, and only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known among, upon the earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not ask and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen.
Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we remember in thanksgiving this day the parents of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We pray that we all may be made one in the heavenly family of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all righteous judgments, all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> I now invite you to present your own intercessions, your own thanksgivings to our, our, our God. I invite you to say these prayers out loud, to pray them in your heart silently. You can also pray them um, by typing them into the comments, uh, either there on Facebook or on YouTube, and we'll join them later. We can all look at them later and see exactly um, what prayers you have asked for, your intercessions, your thanksgivings, and pray them as we go. At this time, uh, we, of course, pray for our church family, for Trinity Episcopal Church, our parish. We pray for the well-being of all who uh, are part of our parish. We pray for those who are suffering in any way. We pray for those who are hospitalized. We pray for those who are facing any kind of medical uh, illness, uh, we pray for their healing, for their peace. We pray for their their sense of calm and the pr their sense of presence of the presence of God with them. We pray for those who are in any kind of a relational strife that they know that they are loved, that they know that they have a place in this world. We pray for all of those um, who are in any way in this this particular heat that they might uh, find uh, shelter and find cool, those particular who are homeless. We pray for the world, uh, the, those places of conflict in the world, uh, those in the Ukraine, those in other places in uh, Yemen and um, in, uh, in Africa, in different, different countries in Africa right now that are in particular strife. We pray for all of those who are struggling in any way um, to, to find a sense of peace and comfort. Uh, let's pray together now the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks. For all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all you have made, we bless you for our creation, preservation, and for all the blessings of this life, but, of all, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by your Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, I'm so grateful that you're able to join with me here tonight. I look forward to seeing you soon. I hope you're able to join with us uh, this Sunday at church. Uh, this week at Trinity, of course, we're so grateful that we're uh, we're 
so very much enjoying having Vacation Bible School. It has been so joyful to see all the children uh, flowing through our church. Uh, I hope you continue to keep um, all of those involved in Vacation Bible School in your prayers. Uh, this Sunday, we're looking forward to another joyful Sunday. Um, one interesting note, uh, this, this coming uh, Sunday weekend uh, in the Episcopal Church is the 49th anniversary of the Philadelphia 11. And that's the, uh, those are the first uh, 11 women ordained in the Episcopal Church uh, as priests. And uh, we'll say a special prayer, of co a special collect, a special prayer commemorating uh, the Philadelphia 11, uh, uh, the first 11 women ordained uh, as priests in the Episcopal Church. And uh, we'll mark that as a special occasion in, our, in the life of our parish, in the life of our church, in the life of our, um, in the life of our church as a whole. So just note that as well, and we're so grateful for the uh, ministry of women in our in our uh, in our Christian life. So I uh, hope to see you Sunday, and uh, God bless, and uh, we'll see you soon.